Have you ever heard of occupational therapy? No, we don't help people find jobs. Rather, occupational therapy is a form of therapy for people with mental and physical illnesses that encourages rehabilitation through activities of daily life and other meaningful activities. Hi, I'm Drew. I'm Kelsey. And I'm Sarah. And we're occupational therapy assistant students at Kapiolani Community College. Occupational therapists and occupational therapist assistants work in a holistic way to increase the independence of the patient. The OT uses purposeful activity to help the client achieve the most fulfilled life. An OT practitioner assists the client in performing activities of daily living. The OT works with patients who have mental, physical, and developmental disabilities to improve motor function, dexterity and strength, mental function, and improve social skills. The CODA's role in the OT process is to provide quality care OT services to the clients under the supervision of an occupational therapist. The CODA's responsibilities during the delivery of services depend on their work experience and the setting they work in. CODA's responsibilities may include implementing, assessing, provided written and verbal reports of observations and client capacities working with the clients to develop a plan, implementing and modifying therapeutic activities, and providing discharge resources. Examples include ADL training, proper body mechanics, exercise, strengthening, and balance. The OTA program at KCC began in 1975. It is a 72 credit accredited program taken over the span of two years. Upon graduating, the student will have earned an Associates of Science. While in the program, the student will be educated by instructors with years of real-world experience ranging from mental health, physical disability, and pediatrics. Upon graduating from the KCC program, the student is now eligible to take the NBCOT exam. Assistive technology is the equipment or devices that can be used to increase, maintain, or improve the functional capacity of our clients. It can range from low-tech, such as a built-up pencil grip, to high-tech, such as an iPad communication board. Assistive technology also includes orthotics, which are splints, mobility aids, such as wheelchairs and walkers, prosthetics, and positioning devices. Now, since the goal of occupational therapy is to enable our clients to engage in meaningful and functional occupations, it's only fitting that OT practitioners utilize assistive technology. In the occupational therapy process, practitioners conduct an activity analysis to determine the demands of each client's desired occupation within a specific context. Oftentimes, this desired activity cannot be done independently without help. This is where assistive technology is introduced to minimize the barriers to function. Assistive technology can be used in dressing activities, eating, hygiene and grooming, communication, mobility and transfers, and home management skills. Understanding our clients' needs and performance skills allow us to implement the diverse types of assistive technology into our practice. Our group would like to introduce you to an assistive technology called a fluidotherapy unit, which is used in dry heat therapy to increase circulation and help relieve pain. This airstream creates air pockets and bubbles to provide powerful massaging action that transmits heat and tactile stimulation to achieve many physiological and therapeutic benefits. The Celex particles act like fluid which allows patients to have limb buoyancy to perform resistive exercises with increased mobility and decreased pain. The Celex particles massaging action provides warmth that helps increase joint range of motion. The Celex within the fluidotherapy unit are made of natural cellulose which is safe for the patient and the environment if ever disposed of. We will now demonstrate how to utilize the fluidotherapy unit for your viewing pleasure. To preheat the unit, press the start button. It typically takes about 20 minutes to heat. Instruct the patient to wash and dry their hands thoroughly. Remove all jewelry prior to fluidotherapy treatment. Remove the cup from the fluidotherapy unit, ensuring Celex particles stay in the unit. 
instruct the patient to place their arm in the fluidotherapy unit and fasten the Velcro straps. Once the patient is in a comfortable position, turn the unit on. Temperature in the unit is approximately 115 to 125 degrees Fahrenheit. Duration of treatment is approximately 10 to 15 minutes. If appropriate, have the patient perform active range of motion exercises. When removing the patient's upper extremity, unvelcro the straps and assist the patient to remove all Celex particles. The fluidotherapy unit utilizes a stream of heated air flowing over and through granulated Celex dry heat media, causing them to levitate. The populations that would benefit are all age groups, acute or subacute traumatic or non-traumatic musculoskeletal disorders, carpal tunnel syndrome, upper extremity fractures, rheumatoid and osteoarthritis, and more. Fluidotherapy can reduce pain and stiffness of the upper extremity, alleviate muscle spasms, desensitize upper extremity, and increase circulation and range of motion. Interventions used after fluidotherapy can include ADL and IADL training, such as grooming, meal prep, and dressing, functional mobility with assistive devices, and therapeutic stretching and exercises.